So I'm in the middle of doing a disc brake conversion on this 69 Type 2 bus I'm restoring for a guy. Um, we ended up going, <laughs> putting it together, driving it, and I was not comfortable with the manual brakes that these things came with. Um, somewhere around 71 to 73, they started optioning um, power boosters, at least, on them. And I thought, you know, I've done this back on 67 pickups with four-wheel drums, put a booster on it, they stop really well. Um, definitely something we need to explore. This has front disc on it. I'll get into that later. But I ran into one very um, helpful <laughs> thing, kind of just scavenging around. Um, all the parts for this conversion are available new, except for one piece, and that is from the brake pedal assembly to the actual new booster. There is a rod, a push rod, whatever you want to call it, and that's the only thing that I cannot find new. Um, and these are very hard to find. So yesterday, this finally came in. I screwed it in. Threads are correct. This is some, like, M14 or something. I don't have the die for it to tell exactly what it is. Um, definitely a metric, something or another, fine thread. So I thought, you know, I'll just get one of these rods if I can. Save me from having to go down the road of finding bolts and fabricating the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can extend it, whatever. Not a big deal. I got a welder. Um... So in my hunt for a couple inches of this, you know, half inch tube, seven sixteenths, whatever it is, I uh, remembered that we rebuilt the front end on this thing. Um, and it looked pretty darn close to the same diameter as the tie rod end sleeves. Um, I ended up having to shorten the sleeves. This bus is lowered pretty drastically. So um, the new ones I just threw in my scrap pile and thought, hey, one day, Maybe it'll come in handy. Well, today was the day because the diameters are pretty close and you know, they're not exact. It would work, look a little cheesy because you'd have to cut it and spot, you know what I mean? So I started looking at this end and I thought, you know, well, they're about the same diameter. And I went, well, heck, this might just, what, what? They, they actually are the right thread. <laughs> so... <laughs> I started thinking, well, it'd look a lot cleaner if I had my old tie rod end, you know, probably threw it away, whatever. Since this is the same thread, I could just cut the threaded end of the tie rod end off, screw it in here. Then I started looking around, I'm like, oh yeah, the manual brake booster has this little guy for hooking master, you know, to push on your pedal. All I need is just the little piece right here. And magically, I get way longer than I need. And it's going to look nice. So, being lucky that I am, apparently, I dug around through a garbage can that I haven't emptied for two weeks for some reason <laughs> and found my old tie rod end. So you can make your brand new push rod for your master cylinder and replace an old tie rod end at the same time, or if you've already rebuilt your front end, these things are like $5 off Rock Auto. That's all the thread that you need, way more than you need actually. A single adjuster sleeve for any type two, just punch in 1969. There is a um, standard right hand thread and a reverse thread tie rod end, so keep that in mind. I'm pretty sure the outer they call the outer is the correct, just right-hand thread. The inner, I believe, is the reverse thread, left-hand thread. So double-check that. If you're not sure, there are five or six bucks. Just order both. That way you know you got the right piece. And using your old saddle, or whatever you want to call it, you got yourself a mystery piece that you can buy brand new and save all the he headache of trying to locate one of these original bars that you're gonna have to cut open and at least lengthen an inch anyway. Um, my other video on mounting the brake booster and stuff, um, the I-beams I'm pretty sure from like a 66 and older, so they're a little closer together. And I had to actually space the booster out about an inch to be able to access the studs on the back of the booster to tighten it down to the plate. Um, check out that other video if you're interested in the conversion. It's about done. This was one of the last pieces I was waiting on, but I figured I was going to make a video specifically for this just to show you that you can make this yourself. If you are missing the entire brake setup off of some basket case 
it's not rocket science what you're building here. Um, this is a pretty common piece. You can probably run to a scrapyard and find something close to this, or just, or just make it yourself out of some plate. A 5 16 make a U out of it, drill a hole through the center of it, got yourself some pieces. So really wanted to share that because it took me a long time. I had to actually buy this from somebody out in Washington. It took for freaking ever to show up. So I've been kind of on hold to actually be able to finish the system, bleed the brakes, all that stuff. If I'd have known this little trick, this thing would have been done already. So I will uh, do a quick video just about how I'm going to build it, which is just as simple as cutting a few inches of the thread off the old tie rod end. And I believe what I'm going to end up doing on this one to save this original piece in case we ever need it is actually just welding the nut to the sleeve itself after I cut it to length. And it'll also give me another adjustment point, which never hurts anybody. For 20, 30 bucks in parts, you can save yourself a lot of hassle trying to locate this original piece you have to modify anyways. And it's going to look better in the end. You're going to have one solid bar. Um, if you have a welder or have a friend with a welder or know a welder, <laughs> then you're in luck. I would not recommend just threading it in, tightening it down. It works for tie rod ends. It would work for the brake booster. But if you have access to a welder, that's always better. And if you're really scared about your welding, <laughs> you can do both. Um, this piece obviously pushes and doesn't pull. So tack it. Don't get cheesy, try to tighten them. It is brake system, so weld it if you can. I'm gonna weld it, but in a pinch to get it moving around your garage or something, you could probably just put this assembly together, cut this to length, stick that piece in, pin it together. It can't really go the other way with the pedal. So you'd at least be able to move it until you find a buddy with a welder to get you taken care of. So let me set up a couple things. I'm gonna take a couple measurements off the bus quick and I'm gonna whip this rod out real quick. Save chopping up a brand new, or sorry, not brand new, but original piece, which will be check eBay <laughs> on eBay soon. <laughs> So once I cut the threaded end off of the tie rod, um, I cut basically the whole thing because there's such a large threaded area inside the sleeve. Um, I bottomed this out into the booster and then actually just took my linkage, put it on the brake, came up with right at 12 inches of this solid rod, which makes sense because if I measured the tube on the original, it's 10 inches and I knew I was about two inches long. So math, <clears throat> um, if you can't find a nut, I actually had a bin full of old uh, tie rod and castle nuts and ball joint nuts and stuff and found the correct nut. Still don't know what thread it is. I know it's metric. Um, I uncastled the nut, <laughs> so it's just a jam. Um, there is a way if you don't want to fight with that, you could just weld this end in tight. And if you're using your original, when you weld the nut, your adjustment would be here instead of back here. I'm gonna do both just because I have the nut. Don't wanna go searching for it. I don't know what size it is, unfortunately. Apologize for that, but I don't have a die to figure it out. So if you have to make your own end, you'll have to do a jam nut on this end. Otherwise, I'm gonna grab out old Sparky and tack all this stuff together and uh, fit her up in the bus after it's cleaned up. And I think that we'll have ourselves a homemade low dollar option for a brand new push rod for your master cylinder on a disc brake. Or if yours is rusted out, jammed up, stripped out, whatever, at least you can make one. And it's very simple, very cheap. And just like that is how you make a non-reproduced push rod for your brake booster on your Type 2 that is two inches longer for your manual to power conversion. Easy to do, cheap to do, a little bit of welding. I got, I don't know what, 30 minutes in this whole thing, measuring it, playing around, answering a few phone calls. So. I'm uh, pretty happy I didn't have to butcher up a stock piece that somebody could use for a restoration. 
Uh, I'll put this thing on eBay. I paid like 55 bucks for it. Whatever, better than chopping it up and butchering it. Now I've got something that's actually even stronger, right length, and I have adjustability at both ends now. So um, just to clarify, when I said I bottomed the nut out on the booster side, that's because I knew I was putting a nut on it to get it away from being bottomed out in case I needed to shorten it at all. Um, I obviously can lengthen it, and I also have adjustment at the front end as well. So something to keep in mind, measure it up a couple times. I like to actually just put things in place, mark them so I know they're right. But uh, it came out just how I wanted it to. And uh, I'll get it put in the bus after I put a little paint on her and take a picture. And we'll call that a wrap for today.